Hey guys, it's Mark Gable with Gables on the Go. Unfortunately, Laurie's not with me today, but I got something pretty cool for you I wanted to show you. You know, down here in the Florida Keys, I'm always surrounded by boats all the time. I think I see more boats than I do people here in the Keys. And it's uh, kind of rare that a boat kind of stands out to me. Uh, and I wanted to share this boat with you guys just because I thought this is something I get a question about a lot. People ask me, hey, what's a good versatile boat for the Florida Keys? Well, this one is on the list right here for sure. This boat is for sale. Watch till the end of the video. I'll give you some information on it. It's not my boat and I'm not selling it. I'm just doing this for a friend that is trying to sell it and I thought I'd pass it along to you guys and hopefully uh, you'll learn a little bit about the Parker 2300 DV today. Come along with me, let's take a look at this boat. So for you guys that are not familiar with uh, the Parker brand of boats, just a quick, quick history on these. Uh, Parkers are built up in Beaufort, North Carolina. And uh, originally the company basically built uh, uh, commercial boats for commercial fishermen. And um, as time went on and their popularity uh, began to grow, they started building a little bit more recreational style boats. but. Every Parker I've ever seen uh, seems to hold very true to the commercial design. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that a little bit more when we get inside the boat and I'll show you how these boats are constructed. The Parkers are kind of utilitarian, uh, not a lot of frills, but a lot of build, a lot of good quality stuff on them. And um, Parkers just are all around great boats. You guys might be more familiar with these boats uh, seeing their pilot house boats. Most of the time, if you tell somebody you've got a Parker, they're expecting you to have a pilot house boat. But as you can see here, Parker does build center console boats, has for a long time. And uh, this is the Parker 2300 DV center console. It does have the bracket on the back here and the motor is on that. So you do have a completely enclosed transom there. And then on this side, you do have a tuna door, or at least what I call it, right there that'll close up so you can drag bigger fish through there. It's got the Yamaha 250 on it. This is a 2021 model. And as you can see, it's got a boarding ladder here on the side, and then it's got uh, trim tabs back here on the back. This boat has really low hours on it. I think around 165, don't quote me on that, but roughly 165 hours on the motor. Lots of add-ons and electronics on this boat. Nice stuff. I'm gonna go through a lot of these things with you, but Parker just builds a, a really, really solid boat. I mean, these things are, they're built right. They're three-piece uh, construction design, and I'm gonna get up in here and show you what that means. So if you look at this boat, you'll notice a difference that you may or may not be familiar with, but if, especially if you look at the sides right here on the boat, you notice how the sides don't come down straight from the gunnels and um, the floor itself is a straight through floor and it's actually fiberglass to the hull itself on the outside here. And um, then you have, so you've got the hull, you got the floor, or they call it the liner, and then you've got the the, the hole just comes around and you got a top cap rail up here on the top. So you can see how it goes around. So most boats that you see would be basically the fiberglass would come down through here straight down. You might have some speakers here or something, but this is actually the hole of the boat right here. These are structural braces on the sides and then your floor is here. The floor on these boats is just rock solid. And you know, depending on what camp you're in, there are great two-piece construction boats with a top cap. Basically on a two-piece boat, you just have the hull and then they lay the entire interior and top cap of the boat down into the hull. And then out here on this rub rail, I get upside down, they fasten everything together, bolt everything in, glue everything in, and it becomes one. But on these three-piece boats, you actually have the hull, the floor, fiberglassed into the sides and then you have the the gunnel caps up here on the top from the rub rail up a lot of um, old school boat guys will tell you that this is kind of a more durable structural way of uh, construct constructing a boat and um, like i said it's not to 
Not to say at all that two-piece boats are inferior, but uh, two-piece boats are a little easier to build, cheaper to build, and you do see that construction on um, the lower end boats, but in this Parker, you've got this three-piece design. So you can see on this 2300 DV, you do have some seating up here. You got the seat backs that you can um, put here to lay out. The ladies can come up here and lay out. You got some seating right here in front of the console. It's really nice. And I like this boat, and the reason I wanted to share this one with you, um, you know what, we, like I said before, we run into boats all over the place down here and people ask us, you know, hey, feature our boat on the channel. And uh, every now and then I will, but I don't know, this boat really stood out to me as a great versatile keys boat as a 15 inch draft. So, you know, you can get back into some skinnier water with this boat, um, yet it's got the big Carolina flare on the front. It's got a deep V on it. It's got a 21 degree dead rise, which is not a super steep dead rise. So um, it will run in flatter water. It will uh, you know, pound a little bit more in heavier water than let's say a 24 degree dead rise boat, but it'll get on plane quicker. It'll be more fuel efficient and it'll run in skinnier water. So you can cover that. And down here in the Keys, as you guys know, um, you know, we got a lot of skinny water down here. So that is, you know, I like, I like the size of this boat and the versatility of it. You want to take this boat offshore, go mahi fishing, go out to the uh, humps and do some fishing. You've got everything you need here and really nothing that you don't. You can see the front up here has the uh, Lumar windlass for your anchor and the bow pulpit up here. Um, anchor lockers right here. He does have a plate in place for a uh, trolling motor if you wanted to put one on here. And then you can see back here in the back, he's got the Minn Kota Raptor um, anchor pole. That is super handy guys out on the flats right there. This uh, actually extends down and I think that's probably an eight or 10 footer. So you can actually be in eight or 10 feet of water and uh, get that thing anchored in here without having to actually throw your anchor. That's super handy in shallow water when you just want to stop somewhere and anchor there. On the back of the boat, you've got a huge uh, fish locker here. Oop, didn't mean to let that go. Ugh, that's a heavy door. Got a huge fish locker here. Got a live well over here. You can see down in there, it is painted blue on the inside. It's got the aerator in it, the pump in it. And then you got another live well right here. So you can have, you know, a couple different kinds of baits, different ways you can configure this thing. I like little things that you might not think about on these Parkers. See this down here? So they've got, you know, basically a measuring stick there, but there's something much more important for that. So when you're, let's say you're bottom fishing over the side, and you got your legs up, your knees up against the gunnels right here. If you're really bearing down on a fish, you can get your toes up underneath this rail and you've got some leverage here. And uh, on a two piece construction boat, the wall would come down straight. And a lot of times your toes are actually in front of your knees and you're leaning out. And I'm telling you, good fish gets a pull on you out there and pulls on you hard, you get off balance a little bit, next thing you know, you're in the water, hang on to your rod. <laughs> but with these, these uh, three-piece construction designs like this, you can actually get your toes underneath you and you get a lot more leverage. And then of course you can lock in underneath this. And um, you know, that might be a big deal to some of you, it might not, but I'm telling you, it's little things like that, that when you look at a boat, if you don't know that, it's not until you buy it and you get out there fishing on it, you realize, geez, I hate this thing for bottom fishing. This would be a good setup for bottom fishing for sure. I like the way this, um, this Parker Helm chair is. Number one, everything is very solid. The vinyl is a kind of a textured vinyl. It feels like a little bit more um, quality vinyl that they use on these Parkers. The owner has put a step, so I'm gonna step up on it. You can see it's about a six inch step here. So you can get up high over everything drive here and or you can the steps are movable so you can sink down in here and lean or you can hit put the seats down and it's actually got foot rests here and i'm going to get you a better view of this but you can see it's just a really comfortable 
driving position in this Parker, and I'll tell you, um, some center consoles are notoriously awkward. Uh, the way you stand, and I'm telling you, if you run 30 miles offshore and your center console seating and standing position is not comfortable, center console will wear you out by the end of the day. Um, I like the way this Parker's set up. I like his step here. Let me get you guys a shot of that removable step. Sorry for the rough camera work today, guys, but Laurie's not here to help me, so I gotta do it on my own. But you can see how you've got your two different levels to put your feet here, and then he's got the step there, and that step is removable, and you've got your Parker or your uh, cushion underneath there. So very versatile helm setup. So he's got the dual Garmin screens. He's got a 12 inch and a nine inch, both touchscreen uh, Garmin electronics. You've got your Yamaha smart gauges over here, Garmin VHF, Fusion stereo. Of course it is a single engine, so you have your single binnacle there. Um, hydraulic steering on everything at Sea Star Hydraulic. You can see the, the uh, hydraulic steering right there. Like I said before, it's got the 250 Yamaha on it. Up top, you've got all of your rocket launchers. Up here, we've got four here four across the top. You've got your uh, spreader lights. Uh, I think there's one in the front as well. Let me check. I think there was a light up here. Yeah, right there. And then of course you've got your accessory uh, box up top, your electronic box up top, which has everything mounted on the dash here. Taco Grand Slam outriggers. You've got your side trolling rod holders here on both sides. So if you if you don't have your um, if you don't have your outriggers out, it's a good place just to put a couple of rods and get some spread out. If you're trolling for mahi behind the boat, and you get some spread out there, so you're not just running them in the rear um, rod holders back here, and they're only about eight and a half feet apart. You know, one thing again, it's small things that I like about these three-piece boats, and things you might not notice. But look at how easy it is to access your um, underneath here. I've actually got my hand, I don't know if you can see it, I've got my hand on the rod holder, but if you wanted to mount additional rod holders or accessories along this gunnel, you've just got plenty of access to do that. You can get to everything underneath there, and it just makes adding you know, additional accessories along the boat super easy. Places to put stuff up here on the console, you never have enough room for junk cell phones, tackle, <laughs> whatever you want. You're always putting it somewhere. These cushions just pop right out. You can have full access to the front, just like that. And then you've got storage underneath. These, you can see he's got a bunch of different stuff stored in there. These could hold anything from life jackets to actual double as extra fish boxes if you needed them. So it's just a really nice layout for an otherwise not very big boat again the hull itself is 23 little over 23 feet long but from the motor all the way to the pulpit in the front of the boat up there it's actually 28 feet long so this boat performs a little bit more like you know something in the 25 to 26 range i would say rather than a 23 foot boat um, parkers are relatively heavy boats and um, this one will be no exception. I mean, not a lot heavier, but they're just well built. So they, they do tend to be a little bit heavier when you're pulling them on a trailer. And then you can see your big bracket back here that holds the motor, the motor bracket. So everything's integrated into that. You've got through that hatch there where your electronics and your hydraulics and things are. This boat, um, the owner says it has a hundred gallon tank on specifications through Parker's website, I've read anything from 125 to 135, but even at 100 gallons, you're probably gonna get about two and a half miles per gallon at cruise in this boat. So you're probably looking at least a 250 mile range in this boat, which is just fine with the single 250 back here. It's got a bag up here. It's very nicely integrated to the top, not floppy like the tea bag I have on my boat. <laughs> and you can put your life jackets in there for quick access. And then up on the top here, guys, he does have the um, Garmin 
24 mile radar. You can see that, that's the HD unit, XHD, I think. And um, he's, this boat has Sirius XM satellite. You can see the Garmin unit up there on the top, Sirius XM antenna right here. Everything on the boat is in really, really good shape. All right, and then in here, inside the, the uh, console here, got a nice area. It's a fairly large console for this side boat. And if you look down in there, I'm not gonna move all this stuff, but if you look down in there, it's got a step down. There's actually a porta toilet right over there. So you can have a porta potty in here and there is one underneath there, it looks like. I can't tell if it's a porta toilet or some Tupperware boxes, but you would have room to put a porta toilet in there and it's deep enough that you could get in there and you know, have at least some way to go to the bathroom on the boat underneath there. But. All right, guys, so just uh, to wrap this thing up, I just wanted to let you know, again, low hours on the motor, about 165 hours on that. The boat cosmetically is in very good condition. You know, there's some cosmetics on it that could be buffed out a little bit for sure, but for a 2021 model boat, it's in really, really clean condition. It's been stored inside the Boathouse Marina, which is uh, right here in Marathon. Uh, the owner has uh, rents a rack in there. I'll get you a shot of that in just a minute. And uh, But you can rent racks here. You can purchase these racks here, but everything is stored uh, within a hurricane rated building inside, high and dry. And um, as you can see out here in front of us, here's their marina. And they actually bring a big heister right here put your boat in your water for you and uh, in the water for you. You just give them a call. They bring it out the big doors, bring the heist out here, put the boat right in the water for you. And um, I tell you what, this boat, Boathouse Marina and Marathon is one of the nicest around, full service. Uh, they'll put you in and out once a day if you rent or own here. And uh, just a really good facility to keep your boat at here. So this boat is in a rental slip stored inside so if you're interested in this boat um, he is currently renting a space in there and uh, you would be able to probably just take that slot over if you wanted it if you bought the boat the boat does not come with a trailer um, and it is not bottom painted as you can see underneath there he does have uh, if you look right there he does have the underwater underwater led lights right there the holes in just <laughs> almost like new condition. It's, uh, it's an exceptionally clean boat for a 2021 model for sure. But the Boathouse Marina here in Marathon, great place to uh, store your boat for full service. And again, guys, I am not selling this boat. I'm doing this video as a favor to a friend. I am selling his two bedroom, two bath condo here in Marathon on the beach. And, uh, if you wanted a package deal, I can put you with the owner on the boat. I take care of the condo and we could get you a condo, your boat, already have your storage set up and everything ready to go all together. So um, hopefully guys, this has been an informative video for you. I just think this boat is um, exceptionally well built, versatile boat for the Florida Keys, easy to trailer, easy to handle and kind of a do-it-all boat that I think everybody would enjoy. And first and foremost, Parker's just a, a high quality boat, very well built. If you're interested in this boat, uh, like I said, I'm not selling the boat, but if you'll give me a call, I'll put my number on the screen. If you'll give me a call, I'll put you directly in touch with the owner and let you guys figure out whatever you would like to on it. Um, at the time of the shooting of this video, the owner is asking $94,000 for the boat with everything that you see on it. And, um, but you know, like I said, you can call me, I'll put you in touch with the owner directly. I really am not gonna get involved with the sale of the boat. I'm just putting this out there so you guys can see it. Another point of contact for you. And I'll put you with the owner and you guys can work yourself a deal and maybe work your condo into the deal as well. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the Parker 2300 DV. And uh, give me a call if I can help you with real estate. And give me a call if you wanna be put in touch with the owner of this boat, we'll make that happen too. We'll see you guys next time on Gables on the Go.